Jesus it's compressing time in your life what it would have taken a lifetime to redeem I will redeem it tonight what it would have taken 30 years to accomplish you will accomplish it tonight what it would have taken you 25 years to obtain I am gonna give it to you because God says I am compressing This is Rich Vera, and I'm so happy that you tuned in today. God is going to bless you and minister through His Word. You know, the Scripture says in uh, 1 John 3.16 uh, that this is how we know uh, what love is all about. Because the Bible says uh, He laid down His life for us, and we also are to lay down our lives for the brother. What an awesome thing to know for a fact that God loves you and I in spite of what we have done in spite of your, your shortcomings and your uh, falling away and the sins that that keep you bound god loves you and it's a fact that you cannot change there's no sin there's no demon there is absolutely no mistake and there's absolutely no person that can take you away ever from the love of god and let me tell you why because the Bible says love was demonstrated by Jesus giving his life for you and I. And I pray that your life will be changed and I'll come back to pray for you. God bless. I'll see you in a bit. John chapter 2. Look at verse 2. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Now, both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. Wow, isn't that amazing that Jesus is not a religious freak? You know, in the old, in, in Bible days, a wedding was a party. A wedding was a party. They celebrated all night long. Let me just be real. They did not dance to majesty. They danced and they got drunk. No, yeah. I mean, it was like the Italian way. When you go to a wedding, you party all night and cases of wine are out on the back room. I mean, they were wasted. And Jesus was in the wedding. That just shakes your religious mentality. Oh, don't do this because Jesus is looking. He was there. He saw a bunch of people. And he goes, like, okay. <laughs> he saw people dancing and getting wild in the wedding. That tells me one thing. Jesus is not afraid of sin. Jesus is not afraid of sinners. And Jesus is not afraid of being what real people are. Hello. Some of you are so religious, you think Jesus only lives in the Holy of Holies out there when you are singing in tongues and, and have white garments. Yeah, that's the weird Jesus. But the Jesus of the Bible, he'll go. Listen, if you'll be getting married and he'll be here right now, Jesus, you want to come to my wedding? Sure, I'll go there. Can you stay for the whole party afterwards? Sure. Well, that's a shocker. But I love Jesus. And when they, when they run out of wine, now let's not be religious. We go, no, it was the, the original meant it was Kool Aid from Publix. Somebody told me it was non alcoholic wine. If you can get drunk with non alcoholic wine, then you're really weak. <laughs> if you can drink non alcoholic wine and get drunk, man, you are weak. And they ran out of wine. The mother of Jesus said to Jesus, Oh my God, what a naughty Mary. They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, I am the holy child of God. Why are you talking about me, wine, when you should be talking about me, the things of the spirit and the things of the kingdom only? Oh, sorry, sorry, wrong Bible. 
woman what does your concern have to do with me my hour has not yet come his mother said to the servants whatever he says to you do it now there were six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the jews containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece wow check this out he used water pots that were designated for the cleansing of the jewish people and he took the water out and filled it with wine now that's freaky but i'll get to that in a second <laughs> jesus is so unconventional man when you get to know jesus you become real you know the more real you are the more you know jesus and the more flaky you are the more you don't know jesus you ever talk to people it's like hallelujah brother glory to god amen oh but i can feel that in the third heaven shut up weird <laughs> jesus is real hey what do you want wine bring me some water i'll give you some wine that's jesus he didn't say no thou need spiritual wine in thine spirit so i am the wine from heaven in your soul that's not what he said <laughs> now so verse 7 jesus said to them fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim and he said to them draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast and they took it when the master of the feast has tasted the water that was made wine and did not know what he came from but the servants who had drawn the water knew it the master of the feet called the bridegroom and said to him every man at the beginning of the party gets out the good wine so when they all get drunk then they bring the cheap wine or the kool-aid but you have kept the good wine until the end this beginning of what now the king james and the new king james says this beginning of signs jesus did in cana of galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believe in him now there's a difference with a sign and a miracle now the first miracle jesus performed it was a miracle that was meant to be a sign get this not every miracle is a sign but every sign it's a miracle and yet jesus the first miracle that jesus ever did aaron was meant to be a sign what was the sign oh what well, the sign was they drunk and got drunk no how many of you know anything about wine the wine that was made three months ago cost $5.99 in Publix. The wine that was made in 1855, it will cost you $20,000 a bottle. Are you with me? Okay. What am I trying to say? The longer the wine is on the wine, what do you call it? Huh? Cellar. The better it becomes so in order for the wine to be exquisite and good and better than the rest it must be on the cellar for a long 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 time yet jesus served water and told the disciples on the container that is meant to bring cleansing to the people i'm gonna produce something that it would have taken 50 years on the waiting but jesus said i don't have 50 years to sit around for some good wine so i'm gonna give them something that in the natural would have taken 70 years to produce i'm gonna give it to you like this 
how long did it take for that wine to be fermented enough that it was the best one they ever had let me tell you how long it took from the time they pick up the jars till they came to the to the guest and he goes sir this is from Jesus I think that was about 30 second walk in 30 second walk Jesus produced what it would have taken 50 years plus to produce in the natural what was the sign that Jesus was saying and he's saying to you now this is the sign I am gonna compress the time so in this season of your life I'm gonna bring a cleansing and a restoration and a manifestation that would have taken you many 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 years to accomplish I'm going to do it in 30. By the time you are ready to drink it, it will be better than any wine you ever had before. Jesus took 50 years or whatever and compressed it into 30 seconds and gave it to the people. What was the sign? The sign in the natural got him drunk, yes. But the sign was this. What it would have taken a lifetime to cleanse, I will give it to you and in one touch I will cleanse it. What it would have taken a lifetime to redeem, I will redeem it tonight. What it would have taken 30 years to accomplish, you will accomplish it tonight. What it would have taken you 25 years to obtain, I am going to give it to you because God says I am compressing. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus, that in these last days, I will have, in a short season, what it took my parents to have in a lifetime. Are you here with me, my Lutheran brothers and sisters? Today is Pentecost Sunday. You go, well, so what? What do you mean, so what? Jesus it's compressing time in your life in other words some of you before tonight you have been praying for a long time for something to take place and God says tonight I'm releasing a word that I will take those years that the enemy tried to waste in your life I'm talking to that brother up there the years of drug addiction and the years of hell God is gonna compress them and it's gonna be a short walk before you walk into him. Are you hearing what I'm saying, Brother Rory? Guys, we are gonna obtain promises that took our forefathers lifetime to obtain. We're gonna obtain it in weeks and in months. I, I I don't think it's getting everybody the same way, yeah. but but you need to watch this on live stream again until it hits you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What it would have taken you 25 years to get, let me, God is going to give it to you before the night is over. You are going to walk in some promises. You are going to walk in some deliverances. You are going to walk in some blessings. Somebody says tonight. Now, picture this. Picture this. It takes a long time to cause wine to become the best. Jesus did it in seconds. Seconds. You know, the Bible says, well, you need to wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have been waiting for too long. We have been waiting for the promise of the salvation of our family for too long. We have been waiting for a ministry for too long. We have been waiting for our prosperity for too long. We have been waiting for healing for too long. God says, I am doing it with me. Compressing.
Now, remember this. He said, this beginning of signs, it wasn't just a miracle. It was a sign. A sign to who? To anyone that dares to see Jesus and to say, I will not wait until I'm 60. I'm not going to wait until I'm 80. I'm not going to wait until I'm 40. I'm not going to wait until I'm 20. I say, God, today I receive it. Today it's mine. Today I walk in it. Today restoration begins. Today healing begins. Today ministry begins. Today. We're in a new season. We are in a new season. God bless you, brother. I've never seen you before, but God bless you. Say after me, new season is upon me now. Compression. So remember this next time when you pray and you go, oh God, but it's been. Think about Jesus doing this, grabbing 20 years of your seeking with that 60 more years of your life. And God is doing this. <laughs> Mama, what's wrong that you have this cane? Here. From, I see from it. From right here. Yeah. It hurts me in the wall. Well, this is pointy. What, did, did you use it as a weapon? No. Uh, in case somebody messes with you, huh? Mama, take your glasses off because your vision is also going. You know that? Yes. Hold this. I'll give it back to you. In the name of Jesus, the glaucoma, I rebuke it in the name of the Lord. And I command the problem on your body. <clears throat> Goes today in Jesus' name. God is going to heal that mom in the next few minutes. You came with a cane that's over there. I'm going to fix you a little bit, mom. You just don't worry about it. You holding a mic. Oh, oh. Okay. Don't worry about it, mom. I'm just going to fix you a little bit. Yeah, hold it here, guys. <laughs> now go ahead, move up, move up and down. Bend down. Bend down a little bit. Now, get up. Bend down. I told you something was going to come out of her. Now walk a little bit, mom. How do you feel now? Where's the mic? How do you feel now? I feel fine. Well, you can head and walk to your oh, chair. Thank you. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Thank you, and you can take that cane back. Take that cane back. What you saw right now in the program, it's real. If it's not real, I won't be able to be showing it to people around the world. And I want you to know that there's absolutely nothing that Jesus cannot heal and answer and deliver you from. Maybe you got involved in some things in your life because of mistakes that you caused upon yourself. But God is so merciful and so good that He will redeem the times and His mercy will erase even the consequences of some of the things that you got yourself into. That's a word for somebody here right now that there are things that are supposed to come upon you but the mercy of God is going to erase the whole thing and you're going to see his goodness come your way in the name of Jesus I'd like to pray for you right now and believe God for a miracle for healing in your body for healing in your life uh, I feel there are people watching me that you need restoration in your marriages uh, God is going to begin to work in the heart of your uh, spouse God is going to begin to deal with a heart and there's going to be a season of change and re reconciliation and be open for that uh, don't, don't point the finger no more I'm talking with somebody right now stop pointing the finger and don't say well it, it, when he says uh, that when he changes or she changes then I will listen it begins with you the change humble yourself right now and let God deal with you and as God deals with you he's a good God that will also deal with your spouse you don't need to help God he has not made you to be the Holy Spirit so what you need to do is you trust God you pray you love and you be patient and watch how the Holy Spirit can do in one day 
what you cannot accomplish in 20 years of your finger pointing. And that's for somebody that needs to receive that today. Let us pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone that is watching sick in their bodies. I pray that the healing power of God will bring deliverance to them from the top of their head all the way down to the soles of their feet. Let the power of God change that in Jesus' name. There's some a lady by the name of Nancy, you're watching me right now. Oh, God is healing you. Uh, there's a problem in your in, in the neck. Uh, 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 it clicks really bad, but you hurt. You hurt it really, really, really bad. And surgery cannot be done because it's a delicate place. And the doctor said that if he tries to to do surgery, that there's a chances that nothing might change. So you're debating whether to change that or not. What well, the Lord is going to heal you. And right now, I speak to you, Nancy, that the power of God will touch you in the name of Jesus. That that problem on your neck that was damaged, that will be healed now. And as you sleep tonight, the Lord will just pop every bone into place in the name of Jesus. There's somebody else watching with an ulcer. You have a, a hole on the bottom of your foot and it's just uh, bleeding and, and it, it just won't stop. And there's this liquid coming out of it. Uh, the, the Lord is going to close that. In fact, there is a heat right now coming in your body. And I command, I curse the root of that problem right now in the name of Jesus. I command it to go. And, and I declare that in the next three to five days, that hole is going to close. It's going to seal. And you'll never have the problem again in the name of Jesus. Sugar diabetes is being healed right now. The, I mean, your diabetes is so out of control. It, it has caused spotting on your body. There, there, there's like this blotches, this spots all over your body, dark. It looks like you got hurt, but it's not. The Lord is healing that. There's cleansing coming your way in the name of Jesus. There's a name, a, a, a man by the name of uh, Manuel. Uh, Manuel. And the Lord is healing you also. There's a heart condition. God is touching you and healing you from a heart condition. In the name of Jesus, I declare that your heart will be made new right now by the power of Jesus Christ. And you don't have to fear. You are not going to die. And stop saying that a heart attack will come upon you anytime. Stop saying that. Because God is going to deliver you in the name of Jesus. Even right now, it's taking place in the name of the Lord Jesus. There's somebody else with a blockage on the heart. Somebody else, I see you uh, with semi-white hair, you know, like, uh, uh, and I see you wearing a shirt, a button-up shirt, a, a light green shirt, something like a very light greenish uh, shirt, and a short sleeve, a button down and the Lord is going to touch that and, and, and cure that thing. In fact, there is a scar already on your chest and, and the Lord is going to heal you from that heart condition. He's, in fact, right now, the power of God is on you and it's unblocking the heart in the name of Jesus. I command that condition to go and let freedom and deliverance come in the name of the Lord Jesus. There is somebody else with a problem in the umbilical cord. You, the, uh, it's like the umbilical cord, it's popping out. It's like a little ball in there. And, and you're supposed to go to surgery or something. But let me tell you something. Put your hands right there. And I want you to press it in now in the name of As you press it in in the name of Jesus, it's going in and that problem won't come back again in the name of the Lord Jesus. Many of you are being healed. I feel an anointing. Uh, that is flowing to your houses. Uh, migrants are being healed right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody else with an ear, there's a, a, a left ear that has a, 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 a ringing on the ear that's being healed right now in the name of Jesus. There's a lady here with a problem on the glands on your neck and, and it causes your body to be swelled the whole time. <clears throat> there's like a choking something you're feeling right now. Be delivered in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command the problem to go. I'll never come back in Jesus glorious name amen and amen I feel the power of God flowing but listen I want you to come and visit me go to my website now find me on Facebook every Sunday but the first Sunday of every month we have a prophetic miracle service where people are coming from all over the world I want you to come fly into the city and let God bring deliverance and his word to you also you can visit us every Sunday and I have some exciting news. Our television program airs 
uh, all over the Hawaiian Islands. And I want you to write me from Hawaii because I am planning on holding a miracle service early on the year on the island of Hawaii, uh, one of the islands, maybe in a few of them. So I want you to write me, uh, let me know that you're watching from Hawaii, and I hope to see you soon. And go to my website for times and dates that I'm airing all over the Hawaiian Islands. God bless you. I love you. Jesus loves you. And I want you to know that absolutely nothing is impossible with God. See you next time. If you seek the reality of truly knowing God, it's yours for the taking. From the time of the first sin in the Garden of Eden, men and women everywhere have been striving to regain that lost relationship. Jesus gave his life on the cross as a payment for your sin and to restore your fellowship with God. And it's yours just by believing it's true. That's what God calls faith. Will you take that first step right now? From your heart, pray this simple prayer and God will do the rest. God, I now know that I am a sinner in need of forgiveness and redemption. I accept Christ's sacrificial death. Receive your forgiveness. Turn my back on the sinful life I've lived and trust you to make me new. I pray in Jesus' name, according to your promise. Because of the faith you've just expressed, you have begun a new life and an amazing relationship with the living God. Your next step is to read the Bible, talk to the Lord every day, and join a growing number of believers who log on to richvira.com. Here, you'll find things to help you grow in Christ. There are also service times and directions for the next prophetic healing service, video clips, and news of other events. So log on now to richvira.com. You can also write Voice of Healing, P.O. Box 2005, Orlando 32802. And be sure to watch again for Rich Vera's program, Voice of Healing.